Hey guys, my name's Dale, and you're watching Think Fact. So, is there more than one internet? Well, the answer to that is no. So, I want to thank you guys for watching. My name's Dale, this is Think Fact, and I just wait, wait, to know that wait. You're the answer actually is yes. Well, kind of. You see, there's only one internet. And then there's more than one internet. Do you see the difference? One is a name and the other is a process. You see, the word internet comes from the term internetworking. All internetworking is, is connecting multiple computers together to make a network, and then connecting multiple networks together to make internetworking. Confusing? Well, let's fix that. First off, you and I are using the internet. This means that the internetworking system that you and I are using shares its name with its process. In turn, meaning the internet could have been named anything. And we can thank the French for this fiasco. But you know, les Français émettent un journée avec les Anglais. <laughs> but this type of concept is not completely foreign to us. A great example would be the moon. The moon shares its name with one of its two classifications. The preferred term, moon, as well as its other classification, natural satellite. And it'd be really weird if we called the moon that. What a wonderful full natural satellite we are having tonight, huh? Anybody? Anybody? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll just leave. That would be silly. When people think moon, they don't think that term is just dictated to the object that orbits around the Earth. We also understand that the term moon can be applied to natural satellites. Like Titan, and Europa, and Ganymede, they're all moons. But only ours is a moon and called the moon. So there's only one internet or internet working system that is called the internet, while there are other internet working systems, aka internets. So if you're wondering when you should be capitalizing the letter I when you're talking about the internet, capitalize it if you're talking specifically about the internet system you are using, and lowercase it if you're just talking about internet working or internets in general. So you may be wondering then, what are these other internets? What are you not telling me? There are quite a few networking and internetworking systems that are not connected to the internet. Unless you're working for a government or an underground organization or a company that can afford to have an internetworking system, things I'll get to momentarily. You most likely only have access to the internet, what you're using right now. The largest of all the internetworking systems on Earth. Now most people don't know this or think about this, but there are literally cores that stretch all across the world, underneath the oceans, and all through continents. All these cords then come together at internet exchange points, or IXPs, and in turn, connecting us all. This is a map that shows all the physical wires that expand underneath the ocean for kilometers, kilometers at end, and make the internet possible. And they are so important that just for retrospect, in 2011 alone, only 1% of all internet traffic was channeled through satellites. 99% of all internet traffic went through cords. So yes, they are extremely important. Beyond that, other internetworking systems are obviously much smaller. Most systems don't even expand beyond a network. And those that are internets tend to be in a single country or in a group of neighboring countries. Now most of the time these internetworking and networking systems are only separate from the internet for safety reasons. Because it stops people from being able to remotely hack and access information in these organizations. They would have to literally attack from the inside. Buildings such as nuclear power plants, manufacturing facilities, even some universities and even ATMs. They were all separated for personal and security reasons. But like I said, most of these don't expand beyond networks, so what about internet working systems? Well, there are underground organizations that are currently trying to be able to create an internet that can be accessed remotely. This is in case a government or governments try to shut down the internet entirely, allowing people to be able to remotely access it. Which is probably a smart thing, you know, just in case. Though their progress and how developed they are is debated. For well-known existing ones, you can probably look at your own government. That said, the United States probably has the most well-known and most highly developed internet system disconnected from the internet, mainly for government use and military use. And this is to let private or secret information be able to travel around a government's own systems without having the fear of other people being able to access it. And the only way you could is if you were directly in the system. So the United States and China have their own internet systems and they can't hack each other because they're not connected to each other. It would have to be an inside job. And in case you didn't know, when information travels through the internet, it is not a straight shot. So for example, let's say you're watching this video in India. The information for this video would have to travel from California to Hawaii to a massive amount of different Asian countries 
before it would even get to you in India. But it also could go through the continental United States, to Europe, to the Middle East, and then to India. There are thousands if not millions of different directions it could take to get to you. And it could even go around the world a few times before it gets to you. And really this applies to everybody who uses the internet. Now I bring this up because back in 2012, for some suspicious reason, the United States military information that is sent through the internet itself to reach bases around the world was being rooted into China before it would ever get to the bases. Because the United States' private internet doesn't expand much further beyond its borders. Maybe Hawaii, but it doesn't go all across the world. So they have to use the internet to be able to get information out to its bases around the world. And someone could easily tap into this information while it's passing through, say for instance China, and be able to take information out that maybe was not meant for their eyes to see. Now China claims it didn't see anything and it was a complete accident. And the way the internet works, it possibly could have been. Though it is suspicious and was a bit unsettling. But this is definitely an interesting look upon how the internet actually works. Information can be passed through any number of countries, even the people you don't specifically care for. And that is the reason why many governments around the world don't let their information be directly connected to the internet. And have their own private internet systems if they can afford it. So, with all that said, I want to thank you guys for watching. My question for you guys is, is when did you start using the internet? I started when I was pretty young. Computers have been in my life since 1996. I was two years old when I first was introduced to computers. So was, my family is one of the first people in the world. It's pretty cool. And with that said, let me know what you think of the video. So my name's Dale, you're watching Think Fact, and remember, never stop learning. Thank you. If you like my videos, please stay in tune for more. More videos and the facts that almost everybody missed. Or at least from what can be seen from the information that we can find on them.